Ladies and gentlemen, this is Juri X, and this is Geography Now, Croatia. By the channel Geography Now. Yes, Croatia. You know, I only know about Croatia because of Ran Tour, right? There was a uh, Hammond basically crashed uh, Croatian uh, electric supercar, and there's apparently Game of Thrones were shot there too. Same thing. I know that from Ran Tour as well, but not much from that. So yeah, this uh, video is going to be fun. Remember, well, if you like my reaction, don't forget to like and subscribe. 75% of you who watches my video are not subscribed. So, you know, subscribe, click the subscribe button, I guess. You'll be supporting my channel. And I would know what type of videos to react to more. Geography videos, history videos, that kind of thing. Check out the Rick Sunday. There's a link in the description. Check out the cast of the basically in cards. And yeah, let's watch it. This episode is brought to you by Live Me. Yes, Game of Thrones was filmed here. It's time to learn geography now. Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbie. We are back in Europe and today we are going to discuss 101 Dalmatian Islands. Ha! Actually, it's more like 580. But first. The flag of Croatia is a little bit more fun and jubilant than most flags because it has the iconic checker pattern in the center. First of all, the flag is a horizontal tricolor that utilizes the pan-Slavic colors of red, white, and blue in equally sized stripes. The blue stands for freedom and hope, the white stands for peace and unity, and the red stands for eh, the revolution and sacrifices. In the middle is the coat of arms with the iconic Shahovnica or the checkerboard shield pattern with red and white squares, sometimes referred to as the Cheki. Some will say that this is because long ago there were like two Croatians one was called Red Croatia, one was called White Croatia, with little evidence supporting that theory. There are five shields on top of the Cheki that form a crown above the Shahovnica, each one representing the historical regions of Croatia. The first one is for Croatia proper, with a crescent okay. and a six-pointed star, Dubrovnik with two red stripes on a dark blue shield, Dalmatia with three crown leopard heads, Illustria with a golden goat with red hooves because, hey, why not? And finally, Slavonia with a six-pointed star, two silver stripes, and a pine marten running on a red field between the silver stripes yeah for so basically they covered everything on their flag which is kind of i like that right it's a flag it's supposed to represent your country and they covered everything with uh, you know unique looking flag sometimes you know when you put too much things on the flag it's there's a fear of you know being a bit too much when you look at the Croatian flag, it doesn't feel too much, but when you really look in details, there's so many details like this. It's awesome. For such a small country, those five regions have had an impactful historical upbringing. Let's discuss more about that in... First off, before we jump in, you might hear a lot of other countries... This is the awesome thing. See, this just looks like a symbol in the center when you don't look at it too detailed. So it doesn't look too much. But when you re really look at it, it's a different regions and it has every different meaning. It's good. Specifically in the Slavic world, using the word Hrvatska referring to this country instead of Croatia to a lesser extent. It's kind of like that whole thing with Germany. Visa in Deutschland. Oh, you mean Germany? Aleman. Tiskland. Niemse. Saksa. Nine. First off, Croatia is located on the western part of the Balkan Peninsula in southern Europe, bordered by Slovenia. Slovenia, Hungary, Serbia, hugging Bosnia and Herzegovina, giving them a small coast on the town of Neum, and just barely have a 10 mile or 16 kilometer wide border with Montenegro at the southernmost tip of the country on the Adriatic Sea. The country is divided into 20 counties, and the country's capital is Zagreb. Fun side note the small Bosnian Herzegovinian port of Neum splits the country's Dalmatian coast, technically creating an exclave for the Dubrovnik Neretva area. They were thinking of building a bridge on the Pelishats Peninsula so the entire country would be navigable by road, but plans were canceled in 2012. Speaking of which, historically, Croatia it was divided into four general regions. You'll probably hear a lot about these if you go to Croatia. They are Croatia proper, Istria, Slavonia, and Dalmatia. Speaking of which, Dalmatian dogs are said to have origins in Dalmatia, hence Dalmatian. Okay, no more rabbit trails. We really need to get back on top. Now, of course, because of its complicated past that we really don't... Okay, so the Dalmatians are originated from Croatia, huh? That kind of makes sense. When he said Dalmatia in the regions, I realized that, hmm, that must be a thing. But damn, Dalmatian dogs are really unique, right? I mean, no other dogs looks like them, and it just, yeah. There is even card for it. We don't have a lot of time to discuss. Croatia has quite a few land and sea disputes, as well as enclaves and exclaves, but I'm just going to list some of the most notable ones. The Bay of Piran, the Dragona River, the Sveta Gera, all that mess on the Mura and Drava rivers. Then we get to Serbia, and it looks like earphones that were just pulled out of your pocket. The funny thing is, nobody really pays much attention to these places, which is why when outsiders do, funny things happen. Back in 2015, a Czech guy came in and self-proclaimed his own micronation called Liberland on the supposedly unclaimed island in the Danube. He was totally erect. But he wasn't the only one. Two other guys tried unsuccessfully. <laughs> First of all, if there are two countries, right? If they don't have strategic dispute, like how there is, you know, in between, uh, uh, which country was that? I forgot. But yeah, in, in Middle East, right? Uh, we saw that video from J. Foreman and also from Real Life Lore, where they don't claim that particular land because if they do claim it, 
right egypt i think dispute between egypt and yeah so if they do claim that land that means they give up the other land if they don't have strategic dispute like that that is not unclaimed land like that between two countries if it will either belong to one country or another you can just walk in there and say this is my area and even in that video i said like that's not really unclaimed area it belongs to either of those countries it either belongs to egypt or the other country Right? They're just not coming forward to see who this belongs to. So they, you know, then they have to give up the other area because of that. But it's either belong to both of them. It's not an unclaimed land either. So somebody can just put the flag there. ...to attempt the same thing on separate islands and failed. The country has over a thousand islands on the Adriatic coast, even though only about 50 of them are inhabited. The largest ones being Kres and Kirk, which even though Croatia ranks around 125 in country landmass, it's all the way up to spot 20 in coastline length. That's more than Sweden and South Africa combined. In your face, Mongolia! By the way, homework assignment, see if you can find this heart-shaped island off of Croatia's coast. Zagreb may be the capital, but people come here to see Pula, Zadar, Split, and Dubrovnik. The Croatian coast is acclaimed by many to be by far one of the most most captivating places in the entire world to visit, especially to witness a sunset. Oh yeah, and Zadar has a strange thing called a sea organ that looks and sounds like this. Okay, let's talk about plants and animals and stuff now. Oh yeah, so I remember that from Grand Tour episode 2. They started, they did that unscripted thing, right? People are constantly bitching like how the Grand Tour sounds uh, scripted. So they made this thing, exaggerating, like, okay, we'll go unscripted. And they just went there while the horn was playing. Nobody can hear shit. It was a funny thing. Howie. Okay, so Croatia may be primarily known for its coast, however, that doesn't mean that there aren't any notable features inland. Although a lot of the land outside of urban centers is used for farming, Croatia still retains some world-renowned nature zones and national parks. First of all, the country is kind of split along the Dinaric Alps that meander diagonally across the northwest regions, all the way to the south along the border of Bosnia and Herzegovina. The division kind of encapsulates the inner flatter areas that slope down into the Pannonian Basin where all the rivers like the mighty Danube flow. Because of this division, Croatia experiences quite a contrast in climate even though the the country takes up a small area. Zagreb can be completely different from Dubrovnik at any given time. About half of the entire country is made up of karst topography, which is basically another word for dissolved, cavey, limestoney ground that erodes into fascinating shapes and providing a network of sub- basically cavey area. Just like we said yeah. in Bulgaria, Croatia is loaded with caves. It's not that hard to find them, and many of them are absolutely breathtaking. Caves like the Blue Grotto on Bishevo Island and the incredibly Ooh. deep Velebit Caves that go down nearly 1,400 meters. Ah, uh, that's cute the one place that everyone in croatia will proudly boast over yeah i'm not i'm not gonna say that i'm a really cave person because they give me sometimes when i really think about it, they give me nightmare right because of all the stories i heard about people getting stuck in you know falling down inside the caves and shit like that but yeah as a whole caves are really cool and I, the, the, that kind of location like blue like blue like blue water type of cave and everything that was just fucking awesome you see shit like that in games and movies i guess but yeah it's, you know, it's good to know locations like that when, you know, you decide to travel to Europe and any other places because most people when they travel, they go to the capital city and the known, you know, known areas rather than some cool shit like this. So, you know, it's it, basically this channel is your guide. Like if you go to a certain country, what, which is the coolest thing you should, you know, visit basically will be the famous Plevici National Park, which contains the Plevici waterfalls and lakes, which is where the coolest music duo on the planet, Stephen Hauser and Luca Schulich, filmed their Mumford & Sons cover video. I can't believe I missed you guys like a month ago when you came into my town and did a concert. Urgh! Sorry, I love two cellos. They're a great band. What? I can like music. Croatia also has that small Georgievetsky desert and a wide range of wildlife such as bats, otters, elk, boar, martens, wolves, and that incredibly rare Eurasian lynx, the largest land cat in Europe that can be found here as well. The coast, though, once again, takes the center stage when it comes to Croatia. Croatia's spotlight moment. Because of its islands and coast, Croatia has had a huge boost in tourism in the past two decades, an industry that outsiders didn't exactly have access to prior for the longest time, and the reason why will be discussed in... Yeah. Croatia has a really, really long history on who it is and how it got to where it is now, and I'm just gonna summarize it in like eight seconds. Roman Empire, Kingdom, Subordinate, Empire State, Wars with Turkey, Yugoslavia 1, Nazi Puppet, Yugoslavia 2, Civil War, and finally, European Union member. See, that wasn't so hard. <laughs> You forgot the Illyrians! First of all, the country has about 4.5 million people and is actually one of the 30 or so countries experiencing a population decline. The country is made up almost entirely of ethnic Croats, around 91%. Serbs make up about 5% and the rest is a slew of other people groups, mostly Slavic, but toss in a few Italians, Jews, and why not some Chinese, and hey, you got Croatia. Now, like mentioned in the Bosnia and Herzegovina <laughs> episode, pretty much everybody in the Slavic Balkan nations can understand. 
every country's video has that like you know minorities throw in some chinese and asians and indians i guess yeah they must be there and each other especially these four countries the only difference is that these two write in the cyrillic alphabet and these two write in the latin alphabet it's a little more difficult for these four countries to understand the remaining baltic states like slovenes and bulgarians and macedonians <gasps> i mean the former yugoslav republic uh, just call them Macedonians. I don't care why you are. Wait, you're just claiming I'm not even part of you. I haven't been part of you. You always think I am. Guys, can we get back to my episode? Shut, Shut up, Croatia. Croatia! Nonetheless, the funny thing is, pretty much all Slavs, whether they're from Russia, Poland, or the Czech Republic, which, by the way, just changed its English name to Czechia, or the Balkan Slavs, can all pretty much hold a basic, simple conversation with each other and get by if they speak really slow and articulate well. It would be like if a Jamaican guy tried to speak to a Singlish-speaking guy. Behind the statue, the coffee shop with the boom boom. No, I see it's on the right side oh, of the statue. The statue, I'm gonna look behind. I'm gonna look the right, man. I'm gonna look the right. How am I gonna know what you said? Why you said behind? Alama, no la. You know this is right, this is left. You very simple one. They're right. I okay, they're right. Okay. All y'all had to say is they're right, not behind. Clear knob. Yala, clear Alamak. already la. Alama, give you right. simple instruction. Also, don't know. You are clear now. Okay la, win already la. Guys, that was Kevin and Layton. Give him a round of applause. What's up, guys? Another quick way you can. Mm, I'm sure there was uh, somewhat racism there somewhere, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Cro <laughs> this is awesome, man. Obviously, you know, Croatia did the history, basically, Roman Roman Empire. As soon as I saw that, you know, stadium type of thing, like Colosseum, like, yeah, Romans, definitely Romans. And around the places, you know, there are similarities between countries, right? Because long before, because of all these wars and shit and Nazis, they got merged a lot tell the Slavic Balkan states apart is the denomination. Croats and Slovenes are predominantly Catholic, while Serbs and Montenegrins are typically Orthodox. Croatians love yeah. water polo and don't even get started on the whole Nikola Tesla thing. He was a Serb. But he was born here. But he was a Serb. But he was born here. <laughs> Essentially, Croatia went from the fall of Yugoslavia and socialism. I mean, <sighs> He was a Serb, but he was born in Croatia. I guess both gets the point. I don't know, man. This is again semantics. From in the 90s and the civil war in the mid 90s to being labeled as the top travel destination by Lonely Planet in 2000 something. I think it was like 2005. Dude, Paul, seriously, we gotta check our sources. You're making us look bad. Shut up, Brandon. I'm doing my best. Let's talk about Croatia's friends. In order to understand Croatia's yeah, so Nikola Tesla, right? Nikola Tesla uh, was a great guy. Uh, he basically, you know, uh, was pretty instrumental with lots of discoveries, but he didn't manage his copyright thing, right? Otherwise, he and his, uh, I guess, childrens and his whole heritage would have been much richer. But people also, you know, there is a debate, like you know, how great idea he had, and he was suppressed. Well, he had one of the ideas, like, how about we transfer energy from one point to another by lasers with our wires. That's a good, you know, by thinking about it, that's really great. But when you really think about it, like, okay, if something comes in the way of that, that thing is dead. So there's a reason why we have wire and we don't touch the wire. So yeah, obviously he was a basically legend, but yeah, some of the ideas were out there too. Friends, you're gonna have to look at two things, business and religion. First of all, they're neighbors. When it comes to Serbia and Croatia, it's kind of like, Why Serbia, Serbia, Croatia? I don't get it. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Guys, no! Guys, no! 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 Croatia and Serbia have a lot of historical beef, but they hate to kind of admit that they secretly are kind of a little bit totally attracted and hot for each other. Business and diplomacy is still very big between these two, and ultimately they still cooperate pretty well. I was told that typically they even give each other a lot of points in Eurovision or something like that, and that <laughs> okay. just proves it. Eurovision proves everything. Slovenia was like a good friend that still held a few grudges since Slovenia was the first to join the EU, and they originally vouched for Croatia, but then they were like, wait, before you get in, we gotta settle some disputes, otherwise I'm blocking you. And they did and then it got messy and then it got fixed the end by default croatia has an affinity for catholic dominated countries like italy spain and ireland especially the irish since they kind of empathize with the whole struggle with the uk and they are totally fangirls of the vatican when it comes to their best friends however they would probably say germany and poland germany is a really close friend since they are kind of seen as like the promised land after so many croatians moved in and made fortunes there germans also love visiting and doing business without a doubt though croatians love it when the polish stop by they're like the best friend who lives far away but skypes every week and sees them twice a year on top of that pope john paul ii was from yeah this segment is dab awesome because usually when when it comes to friendships sometimes you know anybody who's in the similar predicament is a, is a great friend 
Oh, I feel you because I'm going through the same shit. That's usually, I see the trend in this kind of segment. Poland, who liked Croatia so much that he visited three times. In conclusion, Croatia is kind of like the surfer cousin of the Slavic countries. After all the drama subsided, he opened up a hotel and a tiki bar on the beach, got a tan, and was all like, What's up, world? Come take a vacation in Croatia. Stay tuned. Cuba is coming up next. Hey Geography people, so Geography now just got a second sponsor. Download the Live Me app if you'd like to live stream. <clears throat> yeah. There are, you know, obviously I'm not, uh, I know somewhat geography, but not so great. That's why I'm loving this channel so far. In countries like Croatia, I only know from the TV shows like, you know, Grand Tour. There's so many, uh, you know, European countries that, you know, I guess since it's not really Hollywood, you know, famous, right? Most people don't realize it, like what it is, how cold it is, how great it is. Croatia is one of them. So, you know, comment down which is the not well-known countries that this channel has done, but are really, you know, great with locations and everything. Comment down because I really want to react to those uh, countries first before the famous ones, I guess. All right, that was your on Croatia. If you like my Rick Sandro, don't forget to subscribe. Check out the Rick Sandro, there's a link in the description. Check out the Castle Blaze, check out the Incas, and yeah, I'll see you next time.